for you this evening. Give us the thoughts of, of how you're feeling, how you perform. Man, that was awesome. Uh, we uh, planned to stand with them pretty much the whole time. I was prepped to go all three rounds just to, to not have like that early finish mindset if it doesn't happen. You're like a little out of it. But uh, but I know I'd be able to beat them with a punch. And uh, we'd plan to throw straight rights every time. But that hook actually was good. We uh, we work like a lot of like colliding style punches where like if you get somebody who moves and I move a lot, you gotta like time the movement with the punch. And man, that right hand actually was like pretty easy to find. And then hit him with it. And uh, man, we thought we thought we'd hit a a, a right hook after a lead uppercut, which which kills southpaws because you can get him to like come up and then wrap around the ear. And uh, I thought we, I would drop him with that, but he was dropped and then he kind of shot in, but his hands weren't really like there. And man, that guillotine, I hit that's my number one submission like, by far. It's almost like a bad habit because I gave up top position. Well, I was going to ask, can you talk about the decision to go to that? Because I mean, obviously, if it works, it works out perfectly. If it doesn't, now you're on bottom. Yeah, yeah. And I've always thought, like, if I heard a guy, don't try to sub him, try to get the knockout. Because if you guys don't know, just getting a knockout in the octagon is like my life goal. That's just like the one thing that I want to achieve in my life before I'm either out of the UFC or dead. And, uh, and man, still haven't quite got it, but a finish was the next best thing. So I got that finish. It was my favorite submission. You know, I'm a jiu-jitsu teacher too, so that helps to, you know, get a sub on the world's biggest martial arts stage. So man, I'm super happy with the performance. And man, Sean Shelby, thank you for making this fight happen. I had a fight drop out in November and then in January, and then I had an opponent for this card that dropped out because of these issues. And, and thankfully, Berkman, the Warriors, he took the fight. Sean Shelby made it happen. That was awesome. I was very grateful for that because I was training for like four months. What was your feeling like during that time? I mean, did you think like I'm just there's no way I'm gonna get a fighter? Were you able to stay focused and, and make sure you were gonna stay ready? No, I tell my students I got one guy, Jake Heffernan, coming. He's five and zero. Oh. Uh, I'm like, there's no motivation like UFC motivation, and I've taken a few short notice matchups like my debut. And man, like the second the match is like presented, dude, fight camp begins. And uh, and man, fighting guys like Noak was cool. Like when I when when I was talking to Joe Silva at the time, he said Kyle Noak, and I was like, oh no. But at the same time, I was I was gonna take the fight no matter who it was. But I just I've watched this guy fight since I was a kid, and it's just like crazy to to you. Know, know you'd be in the cage with them and then when he said Berkman I was like man I hope that I hope that pulls through that's awesome and then it got me thinking like there's a lot of good young gohards that I'd love to fight like Bradley Scott was the guy I was originally matched up against from from England he's coming down to welterweight I would love that fight still too but uh but man since I can fight some of these vets I'm gonna ask for them like I know Yushin Okami's fighting Diego Lima I'd fight either of those guys those are two really cool guys I've been watching for a little while so you're not worried at all about people saying like, why are you calling out the old guys? Like, get, cut them some slack. Oh, man, those guys are like my heroes. And how often do you get to fight your heroes? Almost never. So I mean, I'm super excited to, to see what kind of these, what, what matches can be made. Very no, cool. Knowing you're such a big Berkman fan and knowing where he's at in his career, do you think the decision to go for the guillotine was kind of like, man, I could probably end this dude, but I'm gonna sort of because it seemed like you were. You didn't want to hurt him at the end of the fight, like when you guys were on your knees at the end of the you fight. You know what, I thought about that. It's weird, like uh, I got a knockout in Legacy a while back and I knocked the guy out and I knew he was knocked out, but I wanted to make sure the fight was like mine and finished, so I kept hitting him. But no, on this one, I felt bad, man. They announced the matchup, and I was like, "Yes, I'm gonna get some like, some like, some fight rep because I'm fighting such a tough dude." And dude, the fans, I'm a fan. I'm one of them. What brutal? And like, everyone was like, "Bergman's old. He should retire." I'm like, "Dude, give this man who dedicated his life to martial arts and put on some great shows some respect." So I mean, so yeah. To answer your question, I uh, I didn't really want to hurt him, but I definitely wanted to finish him. Like, no one has a stronger mind than a fight than myself. I am willing to die out there to to get a finish or to to just to put on a good fight, man. This is what I live for. What were you thinking about him now, knowing like the losing streak that he's been on and you know coming into man, this fight? Man, so I'm, that, I'm off know? of a two fight, I guess technically, well, I'm off a two fight losing streak myself and man that just motivates me to fight and win harder. There was like, like no nerves, so like when I fought Nico in Houston it sucked getting finished. But like once you experience essentially like the worst aspect of this, you know, losing in front of like your, your hometown and like being fine in a few minutes and like you know waking up the next day and like everything's fine. There's, there's like, there's a lot to lose, kind of like financially and, and, and record-wise, but, but like personally, it's something you can easily, you know, come back from. So like, it sucks to lose for the undefeated guys, stand defeated, but it's it, a loss does help you kind of accept what we're putting ourselves, you know, in for. And uh, you know, it's like Luke Rockhold just fought and lost, and he's one of the best. But I mean, that's just, that's just, that's part of the game. Well, you mentioned you're on a, you were on a two-fight losing streak. Was there any pressure? Because three-fight losing streaks, you know typically don't last. Yeah, UFC's brutal with their cuts, and man, and again, like, this is a dream. I still don't know how I'm fighting here, man. It's just, it's, it's just still so surreal and awesome. I'm gonna do everything in my power to stay with this company. And I uh, know, yeah, I definitely needed to win it, but there was no extra pressure. Every fight is the most important fight and the hardest fight, and the fight I'm gonna, like, fight the absolute hardest in, so. Hello, fight fans. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters, including coverage from events with post-fight press conferences and open workout media scrums. And if you like this video, check out this other video to my right.